Hey guys, it's Mike and I created this video for people who have been frustratingly waiting for me to make a Outlook practice exam. You probably feel like this. Mike! <laughs> Mike! <laughs> Mike! <laughs> And I get the frustration. If you were to type in free resources for the Outlook practice exam, this is probably what would come up. There's nothing here! So in this video, we're gonna go over how to manage your Outlook settings. We're gonna go over how to clean up your inbox. We're gonna go over how to manage contacts and tasks. And lastly, we're gonna cover how you can manage your schedule in different ways. Oh, and also, if you pay close attention, you might figure out what my favorite TV show. It's a little bit embarrassing, so stick around for the end for that. In this section, we're gonna learn how to manage settings for your Outlook 2019 exam. So this is one of those tasks where you have to change the settings in Microsoft Outlook. So we're gonna have to go to the File tab, go to Options, and then try to search for uh, where in the options it would be to change uh, this to indent the original message text when you reply to a message. So. Uh, that would be in the file tab like i said and then we have to go down to options click on that and then this would be in the mail tab makes sense you're replying to mail so it would be in the mail tab area and you have to scroll down to this group replies and forwards so when replying to a message uh, we're going to change this to include an indent original message text okay so that's just slight change uh, maybe it'll just indent the original text if there was like a long chain of um, replies. Um, at least you'd be able to tell which one is the original text because it'd be indented uh, with this setting. And then you just press OK and that's how you'd complete that task. For this task we're going to configure Outlook to compose all outgoing messages in rich text format. So by default it's in the HTML format, but we're going to change it to the rich text format instead. And this type of format might allow some more text options, including aligning text and that sort of thing. So it just gives you a little bit more freedom when you're formatting your emails. But to do that, you'd have to, to switch it from HTML. You have to go to the File tab and then again, go to the Options and click on Mail. And then you see the HTML here. Uh, we'll change it to the rich text format. And then we'll click OK. And that's how you complete that task. In this task, we're going to create a search folder named Pretty Big Deal that displays messages that are marked as high importance and have at least one attachment. So yeah, maybe if you're collaborating with others and you mark emails as high importance or they've been sent to you as high importance and have an attachment, those would probably get priorities over ones that you know uh, don't have a file attached or something that you're working on with other people. So to create that folder, you would just go to the search folders and then right click and then click on new search folder, or the alternative could be if you wanna do this really quickly, just press Control, Shift, and P on your keyboard. It would take you to this dialog box, and then you're gonna scroll down to the bottom to create a custom search folder. So we'll double click on that, we'll give this a name. I wanna get you in the habit of uh, copying and pasting from the instructions, if it'll let me, um, because what, yeah, so I'm gonna, you know what, I'm just gonna copy and paste this before I go ahead. And um, on your exam, which is nice, you don't actually have to copy, you just click and it copies it to the clipboard for you. And then you can just paste it right in. So I'm gonna go back now that I've got this uh, copy to my clipboard. And then I'm gonna say choose here and paste, paste the name here. And then I've got to put in our criteria. Now the key for this one, the high importance and at least one attachment, both of those are found in the more choices tab here. And whose importance is this? You know, we're gonna turn, turn that one to high, and then only items with one or more attachments. So the only other option would be no attachments. Maybe you wanna create a folder with no attachments um, to show like other emails coming in that don't have attachments, it's up to you. But for this one, it's more one or more attachments, high importance, and uh, we're gonna click okay. We click okay, and we click okay for a third time. And then we've got our pretty big deal folder. Anything that in is an incoming message that has high importance and at least one attachment would get, you could search for it in this folder now. For this task, we're gonna use advanced find to locate a message that contains the phrase spoiler alert in the message body. We're gonna delete that message because we don't want spoiler alerts and we're gonna close the advanced find dialog box. Now what's missing from this task that you'll probably find on your exam, your Outlook 2019 exam, is that there will be something else in the advanced find 
but I didn't put it in this task because I want you to focus on the first part. It's the locate a message that contains the phrase spoiler alert. It doesn't matter if the message also contains, you know, confidential sensitivity. It doesn't matter if it's marked for high importance. They're just kind of tricking you into trying to uh, filter out more things. In all likelihood, there's probably only going to be a very small number of messages that have this message within the, like the message of the email. So don't focus so much on the second part. Just try to find the message that has uh, the spoiler alert in it. Don't worry about trying to find the confidentiality setting. You can do that, but it's going to take you a lot of time. So just focus on the message for your exam because it's a timed exam and you don't have time to kind of bounce around all of the options. Okay, so here's how we go to search. Um, I'm going to go into the search box here, and then within the search pop pops up, I'm gonna to go to the search tools, and we're gonna to go to advanced find. So this is where the advanced find is, and we're going to search for words. So I wanna change this from subject field only to subject and message body. So it's gonna look through both. And then I'm going to look for the message that says spoiler alert in it. Okay. And then I'm gonna say find now. And then it found this message. So I'm gonna double click on the message and then I'm going to navigate my way to this delete icon here so we can delete the message and then just close this advanced find dialog box. So for this task, we're gonna to go to the inbox and we're gonna locate the hi from the future message. I literally created one message and this whole Outlook email address just for this tutorial. So I only have one message. It's kind of sad, but I'll, I'll get some more maybe. So anyway, save the message to the documents folder as a text file, and then we're gonna use the default file name. So on your exam, there's not just gonna be just one message. There's probably gonna be like a few hundred and you have to search. So the best way to do that would be to go up to the search bar, type in, uh, then I've spelled the name wrong, but they still found the, the message because it's the only one. And, uh, just, and then highlight the message. So with this highlighted, you can go to the file tab and click save as, and then It'll have like the subject line of the message in the file name. Just leave it as is, as they said, and then change it to text only. Make sure you save it to your documents folder, press save. And there you go, it would be saved in your documents folder. That's how you complete that task. In this section, I've got two tasks that'll help us manage messages in your Outlook 2019 exam. This task is gonna ask us to modify the compact view of the inbox so that the columns display a maximum of three lines in compact mode. So by default, your inbox already is in compact mode, but the keyword there is the view. So view tab, we have to change something there. And if you wanna just double check that this is in compact mode, uh, you can see when we go to change view, compact is selected. So by default, the inbox is in compact mode. What it does is it compacts kind of like the content of the message. And if you extend it to three lines, instead of just one, you can see more of the content. So you would change it here in the message preview drop arrow, and then change it from one line to three, and then I'm gonna say this folder instead of all mailboxes. And then you can see that there's more of the content uh, shown if you want a greater preview, or if you wanna save space, you could change that back to one line. So again, we'll search for a message and then we'll flag the message as do not forward. So if you wanna search, you could do it here. You could also choose the search tab and then current mailbox and that kind of thing. But if you want to flag the message as do not forward, that's in the home tab under this little flag and the automatic options aren't, that's not one of the options to do not forward. So we have to choose custom. And then from here, you should be, you, have, you might have to scroll around a bit, but do not forward is right here. And then we'll press okay. And then you should see that like kind of red flag that says do not forward here. In this section, we're gonna learn how to manage contacts and tasks. For this task, we're actually gonna create a task named watching YT videos uh, with today as a start date and due date and set the status to in progress, save and close the task. Okay, so there's a few ways you can get to the uh, task options in your Outlook. You can he click here or in the Home tab, you can click the new items and then uh, click task. So again, uh, if this was a timed exam, what I would do is click on this, it'll automatically copy it for you and then just paste it in the subject line here. But I'm using Microsoft Word here, so I have to copy it first and then paste it there. That way there's no spelling errors. Okay, so that's the subject of this task and uh, this date is today. So July 1st, that's the start and due date and the status is uh, in progress right here. Okay, so watching YouTube videos. So if you're already doing that, then uh, you can just save and close that task and that's how you complete that task on tasks.
For this task, we're gonna take one of our contacts and add them to the contact group and then save and close that group. So we go to our contacts here and there's other ways to get there, but this is my preferred method now. I don't have very many set up, but on your exam, there will be a lot of groups and people set up. So you're gonna to have to search uh, here, but it's tempting to search for the person, but you actually should search for the contact group. So in this scenario, you'd actually wanna search for the contact group first. This comes up here. And then, yeah, it would, what, what would happen is actually pop up on the left. So when you uh, search the contact group, anyways, it would come up here or you could look down um, and then you wanna open this up by double clicking on this. And then from here in this window, you have the option to add members. And then we could say from either of these uh, options, but we know this person is in our contacts. And then you just click on their name or double click on their name, sorry. And then press okay. And now they're in this Excel tutorial watch party group and we can save and close it. For this task, we'll go to the task folder and then we're gonna locate the specific task insert timestamps and we're gonna to assign to Mike Carter, not Michael Carter. Uh, little side note, if you're being formal with me and you wanna send me a polite message, I prefer Michael, but if we're friends or you're my wife and uh, you have to yell something or get the message across really quickly, I prefer Mike, just like my son demonstrated in the intro of this video. Mike! <laughs> Mike! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to the task. We'll go to this check mark here and then we'll click on the insert timestamps. We'll double click on it, sorry. And then that'll pull up this um, yeah, assigned task. So the insert timestamps will assign the task. And then whoever you give the email to, or whosoever email you type in, um, this will be assigned to them. So I'm going to assign this to Mike Carter, not Michael Carter, right here and then set the status to waiting on someone else. So I'm waiting on someone else. So status is waiting on someone else. So don't miss that in the fine print here, waiting on someone else. Uh, do not keep an updated copy of the task on your task list. So we're gonna uncheck this one, keep an updated copy of this task on my task list and then send the task. So we'll just click send and then Mike will understand that he needs to insert timestamps, but we're also waiting on someone else to do something. Uh, maybe for someone to help out with the video that we're gonna add timestamps to. In this section of your exam, you're going to manage schedules and appointments. So for this task, we're gonna display the calendar. We're gonna configure the view to display the schedule for the current work week. So usually it's in like monthly view, but work week is a little bit different. So we'll go over to the calendar here. And then you can just simply pick uh, work week here or press Control Alt and two at the same time. And that's what it would look like. And on your exam, you would just click uh, next project. For this task, we're gonna create a one hour appointment with the subject dentist at 8 a.m. on the first Wednesday of next year. We're gonna show our time during the appointment as out of office, and then we're not gonna forget to save and close the appointment. So in Outlook, if you really wanna uh, get to your appointment options really quickly, you could press Control Shift and A on your keyboard and that'll pull this up really quick. So that's a good thing to know. And you are allowed to use these uh, keyboard shortcuts when it comes to your exam, and it will save you time on this timed exam. So the first thing I would do is change this to show as out of office, like they said. Your version of Outlook might say title, just like mine does, but it's really the subject. And in your exam, it'll say subject. So uh, the title and the subject are the same thing. So we'll type in dentist here. Well, we have to change the date to the first uh, in January the first Wednesday, which would be January 5th. And then we'll change the time from, uh, whatever this was, three, to, what was it, 8 a.m. And then change this one to 9 a.m. So it's one hour long. And then you've got the out of office and there's no reminder, so that's good. And now we can save and close. And that's how you complete this task. For this task, we're gonna locate the new Excel video meeting that occurs on Tuesday and forward it to Jane Carter. I mean, if my mom doesn't want to watch it, then who does? So so the way you do that is try to find the uh, calendar. And then what I would do, there's a few ways you could do this. Like you could search it up, but um, I would just go to, if it's like a next Tuesday kind of question or a next Wednesday, uh, just locate it and then right click on it and then forward that. Okay, and from here it says, uh, we have to look for the contact Gene Carter, so I can just, if that's a contact I have, um, 
And if it sounds like that name was saved into the contact. So, so if you had a question like this on your exam, just start typing the name, it'll pop up and then uh, click on it. This isn't actually my mom's email, but I feel like for demonstrative purposes, I have to send this because on their exam, they're gonna make you wanna uh, send it. So it's, yeah. Yeah, so you'd actually have to press send. I'm gonna press send. I mean, maybe this Jane Carter, who is not my mom, actually wants to see my Excel video. So at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, so we'll send it to her. And if I get a response from that Jane Carter, I'll let you know in the next video. So again, just like the last two tasks, you'd have to search for this uh, inbox message, want to watch The Bachelorette. Don't judge me, I do that all the time. And uh, from this message, create a meeting request that automatically includes the message content and invites all of the message recipients as attendees. We'll schedule the meeting to take place next Monday at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Mike's house and then actually send the meeting request. So you could just click on the message once you find it. So double click and from here, there's a few ways you can do this because they're, if you're taking the exam online, this might be condensed. So you just have to kind of look for a icon where there's like a purple arrow going to the left, or you could press Control, Alt and R at the same time on your keyboard. And that would bring up the, uh, the meeting from this message or turn the message into a meeting. Uh, from here, it says uh, the location is Mike's house. So on your exam, you could just click this, paste it here. I'm gonna copy and paste it over just to kind of use that same technique because it will save you time um, if you're running low on time on your timed exam. So just paste it. Then we have to change the meeting time to next Monday at 8 p.m. Right there, and then to 10 p.m. Yep, the show is two hours, I watch it. And, uh, and then the last thing we have to do is actually send the meeting request to uh, the recipients. So we'll just click send, and that's how you complete that type of task. For this task, we're gonna go to the calendar and we're gonna locate the uh, meeting Outlook exam part two video, that meeting that occurs next week on July 15th. We're gonna add the members of the Mike's officers group to the meeting as required attendees. So they have to come. But if Jane Carter is part of that group, we can remove her and say that her attendance is optional and then send the meeting to all attendees, including the ones that are optional or required. Now, this is really great if you're in an organization like mine where you have like full-time employees who are on salary, so they're kind of required to go to all the meetings, whereas the part-time staff have the option to go to the meetings, um, but they're not necessarily paid to unless notified otherwise. So they would be kind of like an optional meeting attendee, but the full-time staff definitely have to go. So we're gonna do the same kind of thing here. We're gonna locate this. So we'll go down to the agenda icon here or the calendar, and then click on this, uh, find this inside of our calendar. I'm gonna double click on it and that's gonna open it up. You could click on it once and press open. Uh, that would work too. So for required, we're gonna add the group Mike's officers. So those are the required, that's the required people. And we'll press okay. When we expand this, you might notice that Jane Carter is in there. So I wanna take her out of the required group. So you might have to take them out of the required group if they are in here, which means I'm gonna make sure it starts with the Michael Carter and then look up that person individually as an optional uh, attendee for this meeting. So I'll add her to the optional attendees. We have our two from the Mike's officers groups who are required to be there and we'll press okay. And then we'll just send, so we've got three attendees, we'll send it to all of them. Yeah, I should probably put a meeting location or like a link if this was a, um, like if we were meeting online, like a Zoom meeting, but it doesn't actually say to uh, put a location in here. So we'll just send anyway. So those were the first 15 questions I had. I have another 15 questions coming next week as part two of this Outlook practice exam. So join me for that one. I'll post the video uh, down below. Don't forget to subscribe as well so you don't miss important updates and weekly content. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.